Well, we got the June audit exam. We're all the way up to page 14. And uh, questions 68 through 71 all pertain to this information. The spring and a dart launcher. Now, I'll tell you, I stop here and I got a problem. I know that the Regents is trying to be user-friendly so that the kids can relate to it. And some old guy who's writing these questions thinks, hey, let's talk about a dart launcher. Because, you know, the kids all play with dart launchers. What do you think of when you think of a dart launcher? Yeah, that's what I thought of, too. At any rate, these... Uh, uh, I think what they're trying to talk about are these guns with the springs in them. And there's a gun where there's a little spring, you pull back on it, and uh, this one launches uh, uh, ping pong balls. And uh, this one here, it has these little rubber tipped, I guess they would be called darts. And you would pull back a spring, it would lock in place, and it would have potential energy stored in it. And then when you pulled the trigger, it would come firing out. And then I realized, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about these things. They launch darts. Yeah, I mean, you just never hear that. Let's go out and have dart launcher wars. Forget it. We know what they're called. I don't know if I can say it because of copyright infringements and stuff. Nerf guns. Sure, of course I can. It's a Nerf gun. Oh, these are great. And you pull back a spring on many of these. And then you're ready to go. Make sure you load it up. All right, we're ready to go. All right, so now I got an understanding. So the spring in a dart launcher, a Nerf gun, has a spring constant of 140 newtons per meter. So the spring constant is 140 newtons per meter which would take 140 newtons to pull it back a meter, which is uh, pretty good. The launcher has six power settings. Six power settings. I'm going to get one of those. Zero through five. Why would you have a power setting of zero where it goes zero? That's just... Nah. Okay, set guns on zero through five. With each successive setting, have a spring compression of... Uh, 0 0.02 meters beyond the previous setting. So you pull it back, and I guess that's why you need zero. You have start off, then you go back uh, a compression of 0 0.02 meters, and then 0 0.02 more, and then 0 0.02 more, and then 0 0.02 more, and so on. Uh, during testing, the launcher is aligned to the vertical. So you're shooting straight up. The spring is compressed, and the dart is fired upwards. The maximum vertical displacement of the dart uh, in each test is measured. The results is shown on the table. So here we go. Power setting of zero, sure enough, zero and zero, just as advertised. And then you go to one, it's 0.02 uh, meters, so it's about two centimeters. And then you go to four centimeters and six and eight and ten centimeters, so centimeters about good distance and it's the darts going to go up to seven meters in the air which is is really ripping that's a good size uh, launch so let's see what they want us to do uh, 68 plot the data points for the data's maximum vertical displacement versus the spring compression well that's just a matter of transferring some data our spring compression of zero it goes up in the air zero meters our spring compression of 0 0.02, it goes up 0.29. Well, if that's one, that would be a half. This would be just a more than a half, so I'm going to put one here. At 0.04, it goes up 1.14. So there's one meter. There's 1 1.5, 1.25, right, so I'm going right out here. 0 0.06, it's going to be 2.57. 0 0.06 is 2.57. So here's 0 0.2, 2.8, 2.9, 3, 2.5. Okay, I'm going to go just a hair up here. Uh, 
uh, 0.08, that's up to 4.57. So three, four, four and a half, 4.75, yeah, that just put it. And finally, at one meter of stretch, I've compressed my spring one meter, I get it up to 7.1 meters of height. So here we are at one, seven, 7.5, 7 7.4321. Okay, here we go. For one point, plot them. For one more point, draw the line of best fit curve. Well, it's going to be a curve that's going to look like that. It's going to be a parabolic curve. Let me show you how I do that. Well, it's a curve that goes this way, and my hand, uh, actually my elbow here, and I, my hand kind of curves this way. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to turn the paper like that. My natural pivot of my arm is like this. I'm going to start here and just kind of a natural flow of my hand. Look like that. When I get a nice curve, I'll go back and look at it, and uh, it doesn't have any bumps. It doesn't kind of deflect to go get one of these. That looks like a nice curve. I bet you get a point for that. Question 70 says, using the information from your graph, calculate the energy provided by the compressed spring that causes the dart to achieve a maximum vertical displacement of 3.5 meters. Uh, calculate the energy. Okay. Show all work and everything. So that's right about here. They didn't give us the numbers for 3.5. They want us to look at the curve on our chart. So there's 3.5. And so I've got a vertical displacement. Distance upwards is 3.5 meters. And I've got a spring compression. And at 3.5, it corresponds to... Um, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08. I'm going to say a spring compression of 0 0.07 meters. And I know my spring constant, K, is 140 newtons per meter. And that's from the uh, problem. And I want to know the energy provided, or the potential energy, in this case, potential energy stored in the spring. So I've got to go find that formula. Potential energy in a spring, one-half kx squared. So potential energy is one-half kx squared. I have x of 0 0.07, k of 140. Uh, and so I'm going to plug those in. k of 140 newtons per meter times 0 0.07 meters squared. And I uh, divide it by 2. Get my calculator out. And I get a potential energy of uh, 0 0.343 uh, Newton meters squared over meters. Newton meters are joules. Don't forget to divide by 2. I know I forgot to the first time I did it. And question 71. Determine the magnitude of the force in Newtons needed to compress the spring. 0 0.04 meters. So how much force is needed to move at a distance of 0 0.04 uh, meters? The spring constant was 140 newtons per meter. It's only worth a point, so they only want an answer. Well, the formula says the force in a spring is equal to K times X. So F is equal to K times X, 140 newtons per meter times 0 0.04 meters. Meters cancel out. I'm left with newtons, which is a good unit of force to work with. And my calculator says the answer is 5.6 newtons. 5.6 newtons. I'm done there.